The U.S. Navy will name an aircraft carrier after Cook First Class Doris Miller. Miller received the Navy Cross for his actions during the attack on Pearl Harbor, helping move wounded soldiers to safety and manning a machine gun to repel Japanese planes. The future USS Doris Miller will be the fourth carrier in the USS Ford class of carriers and will enter service in the early 2030s. The U.S. Navy made the announcement on Martin Luther King Day at a ceremony at Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam, Hawaii. The reasons for the naming are twofold, to honor the U.S. Navy's enlisted sailors and their heroes and to honor the contributions of African-American sailors. The USS Miller will be the first aircraft carrier in the history of the U.S. Navy to be named for either. Doris Miller born in Waco, Texas, on October 23, 1919, enlisted in the U.S. Navy and served on the ammunition ship USS Pyro and the battleship USS Nevada. On the morning of December 7, 1941, Miller was aboard the USS West Virginia collecting laundry when, as the U.S. Navy tells it, Miller was below decks December 7, 1941, when the first Japanese torpedo struck USS West Virginia BB-48. His battle station in the magazine damaged, Miller was ordered to the bridge, where he helped carry the ship's mortally wounded captain to safety. Miller then loaded and fired an anti-aircraft machine gun, a weapon that, as an African-American in a segregated military, he had not been trained to operate. Miller stayed behind once the order to abandon ship was passed to help evacuate shipmates and save the lives of sailors in the burning water. West Virginia, heavily damaged by two armor-piercing bombs and five torpedoes, sank pierside at Pearl Harbor, killing 130 soldiers and injuring another 52. The ship was subsequently refloated, repaired, and served throughout the Pacific Campaign of World War II, until the Japanese surrender of 1945. Miller was portrayed in the film Pearl Harbor by actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Miller survived Pearl Harbor unscathed and received the Navy Cross for his actions on that day, the service's second highest medal for valor, and went on to serve on the escort carrier USS Liscombe Bay. In 1943, Liscombe Bay was attacked and sunk by a Japanese submarine during the invasion of Mackin Island. Miller was declared missing in action after the attack and reclassified killed in action one year later. His body was never found. USS Doris Miller CVN will be the fourth Ford-class aircraft carrier, following USS Ford, USS John F. Kennedy, and USS Enterprise. The Navy will buy about 11 Ford-class carriers, replacing the older Nimitz-class carriers throughout the 2020-2050 time frame. USS Miller's naming is a radical break from U.S. Navy aircraft carriers. Carriers were originally named after Revolutionary War ships and battles USS Yorktown, Enterprise, Saratoga, Lexington, with World War II, battles added between 1941 and 1945. Recent carriers were named after five-star admirals Nimitz, Presidents, Washington, Lincoln, Roosevelt, Truman, Eisenhower, Kennedy, Ford, Reagan, Bush, and pro-Navy politicians Stennis, Vinson. This name begins the process of depoliticizing ship naming. It also honors enlisted personnel, a process that the U.S. Army also recently went through after it named the Stryker armored vehicle after two enlisted personnel, Private First Class Stuart S. Stryker, who died in World War II, and Specialist Four Robert F. Stryker, who died in the Vietnam War. Finally, the naming process honors the service of African Americans in the U.S. Navy. As of January 2019, approximately 65,000 African Americans were serving in the Navy while the number over the lifetime of the service almost certainly reaches well into the millions. USS Miller, like the other ships in the Ford class of aircraft carriers, will be one of the largest warships ever built. Miller will carry nearly 80 warplanes and will be manned by 6,000 sailors. Miller is scheduled to be delivered to the U.S. Navy in 2032, a fitting tribute for the sailor that gave everything. Learn more about Doris Miller from historian Dr. Virginia Akers of Naval History and Heritage Command, in the following interviews. Yes, on 7 December 1941, the Japanese had a surprise attack on uh, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, and uh, one of their specific goals was Battleship Row. Dory Miller was on the USS West Virginia, a battleship. 
He had just finished, uh, he was a mess attendant. Uh, he had just finished serving and he was sorting laundry when the first uh, enemy attack hit his ship, the West Virginia. Um, during that time, everybody on the crew has a battle station. When Dory reports to his, that part of the ship is damaged, so he moves on. He encounters an officer who is with the captain of West Virginia, Captain O'Banion, and he's uh, got a mortar attack, a uh, shrapnel attack rather. He's been hit by shrapnel and he's injured, seriously injured. And so the officer asked him to move, uh, assist him in moving the captain to a safer deck, um, which he does. And then he proceeds, um, when, when they reach that, that deck, to um, respond to the attack. And he and um, an officer looked, there's an ammunition gun there, a 50 caliber anti-aircraft gun, and Miller takes the gun and he shoots. Now what's extraordinary about that is, as a mess attendant, normally his uh, battle station would have been to hand the ammunition up to the gunner because blacks weren't allowed to be gunners, to fill the gunner's mate rate at that time. But Dory literally took the gun and started shooting. And uh, there's lots of stories. Did he shoot something down? Did he not? We really don't know. No one is credited with a shoot down at Pearl Harbor. He says, had said in several interviews, he thinks he might have hit one or two. And that's why that carries on into our time that Dory Miller shot down planes at Pearl Harbor. All right, now, as and far as... I should add, too, that in addition to that, uh, the ship's severely damaged, um, can't be saved. One of O'Banion's last thing is to give the abandoned ship order. And so um, Dory Miller, there are injured people and, and sailors trying to move about the ship. He assists them, and then once he's in the water, he continues to do that. So uh, his heroism didn't stop with firing a gun, is the point I want to make. It continued uh, throughout the events of that morning, that fateful morning. Well, Dory Miller, when Dory Miller entered the Navy in 1939, um, I need to provide some context to kind of answer your question. Um, blacks were limited to specific ratings. And Jim Crowism in society, uh, separation of the races, was also the practice and policy in our, in our military by virtue of our War Department. And so the Navy discriminated against blacks by the types of ratings that they, they, they uh, could feel. The idea was that um, they couldn't do any more than manual labor. The Navy hadn't recruited a black in general service since 1922. So when Miller enters in 39, that's what he, he's coming into. But he's from Waco, Texas, so racism and discrimination are not far from his experience. It's important to the Navy on a couple of levels. One, Dory Miller is a hero, his heroism his response, um, putting a, the captain to a safer place. Dory Miller's actions, though he didn't wake up that morning and decide to be a hero, showed, uh, contradicted the popular belief that blacks and whites could not serve together uh, effectively and efficiently, that blacks could not perform in combat, that blacks were, some of the stereotypes, that blacks were afraid of water. Uh, it, it contrasted that quite a bit. After this happens, Dory Miller is put in for an award uh, initially by Secretary of the Navy William Franklin Knox. He decides that Dory Miller should get a letter of commendation. And the president and Chester Nimitz, who succeeded husband Kimmel as a commander in chief of the Pacific, disagree. And the president intervenes. Now keep in mind, Chester Nimitz had just come from what we call today the Bureau of Naval Personnel before he took that job. And so he understood the significance for the Navy because for the Navy, Dory Miller is going to become a symbol or a recruitment, a means of recruitment to encourage other blacks to enlist. And also keep in mind that just prior to this, uh, earlier in that year, there was um, a threat for a march on Washington because the war industries were not hiring African Americans. And so A. Philip Randolph, who was the president of the Sleepy Car Port Sleeping Car Porters, proposed a march on Washington to protest this. So Roosevelt has all these things in mind when this happens. Anyway, consequently, the, uh, they intervene, and Dory Miller receives the Navy Cross, which at the time was the third highest award, May 27th of 1942, aboard a ship, uh, Nimitz himself presents it, um, in Hawaii. And so that's the significance, and also they continue to use him in this way in the sense that he goes on recruitment drives, he goes on war bond drives, his pictures all over the place. So there's that impact for the Navy 